Tonight we want to dig deeper into what this five-year-old boy, Ethan, might have gone through in the last six days. It is hard to imagine putting yourself in that situation, not to mention what he witnessed during his abduction. He is just five years old. We also want to try to explore what happens next, but also what played out in the negotiations and the rescue operation. Joining us, Alabama State Senator Harry Ann Smith, who was with Ethan's mother when the call Hi. came in that he was alive. Also, Michael Sen, a pastor in the Midway Assembly of God who counseled the children who witnessed the shooting on the bus and the Abduction, and also join his former FBI hostage negoti negotiator, Chris Voss. Uh, Senator Smith, I want to start off with you. You were there when, uh, when uh, Ethan's mother got the phone call. Can you describe that moment? Uh, it was a great moment. I mean, she was being whisked away. I was driving up for my afternoon visit with her, and she was being whisked away. Um, at, at this point now, I know to meet with her, to be reunited with her son. Um, she hugged my neck, she thanked me, and um, she was a little nervous, but um, there were smiles all around, so I knew something was going on, and then later learned she was being re reunited with the little boy. So, um, lots of smiles, I'm sure lots of hugs, and lots of kisses going on right now. Yeah, I can imagine. Well, Senator Smith, has, to, to your knowledge, was she able to communicate at all with her son or anyone from the family being able to communicate directly with her son over the last several days? You know, that's a question for law enforcement. Um, I know that they kept her very well briefed, um, let her know what was going on. She um, had complete faith in um, what law enforcement was doing and was just very grateful that um, they were keeping her informed of what was going on. She got briefs that, um, about his condition, that he was doing well, and um, she, she complied with what they asked her to do. And, and Pastor Sen, I know you counseled a number of the children on the bus uh, when, when Ethan was originally taken off and that bus driver was shot. I, I can't imagine what those children saw, what they witnessed uh, if they saw the bus driver shot. What did they tell you? What, what did you say to them? Well, they, of course, it was very shocking by the time I got there. It was about 35 minutes after it happened. And they were still, in, you know, so much in shock, they wasn't saying a whole lot. Uh, but they did explain to me how the, the, the gentleman had come on the bus and had asked for two hostages, actually, and, and had told some of them to get off of the bus. And then, actually, he, he got a hold of this young man. And, uh, but they, you know, they were still in shock so much they couldn't start to say a whole lot. All I could do really was just, you know, love on them, comfort them, and had an opportunity also to pray with some of them before they left. What, what age were, were these kids? I mean, were they all in the five-year-old uh, five age range that Ethan was in? Well, there was actually several different uh, ages on the bus. This is a small community, and from my understanding, this bus uh, picked up kids from the elementary school, the middle school, as well as the high school. So I know that a uh, few of them that I talked to was 12 and 13 years old, so uh, there had to be a pretty good variation of the age group on this bus. Mm. Well, and Chris Voss is joining us now. Chris, fr from a negotiator standpoint, what do you make of how this operation went down? Well, Anderson, uh, from a negotiation standpoint, they did a great job. From the, from the very beginning, negotiators effectively, they put a stethoscope on the situation and they monitor the threat level. They think about every single word that the, uh, the hostage taker says, they think about its context, and they get a really good handle on his emotional state, what direction it's going, and they start to predict what the uh, negative indicators are, what the warning signs are, if it should begin to get out of hand. They started to see this over the weekend. They realized that this sort of tactical action was probably going to be necessary, and they supported the tactical action that the hostage rescue team took. It was a great textbook case. And, and Chris, wh wh when I heard about the, you know, when you see the, the, the graphic of, of this bunker, the layout of it, um, any kind of tactical operation has got to be extraordinarily difficult. I mean, it seems like there's only, really only one entrance point into this bunker. Um, that's got to complicate the, the negotiations and complicate the planning for any kind of operation. Right, yeah, it, it certainly seems that way. I mean, that was, uh, at the beginning of any one of these situations, there's really three teams that swing into action at the very beginning and work the entire time. The negotiators begin to find out as much information as they can, and they'll discuss things in a way that helps them find out 
the exact layout on the inside and where the hostage taker has things placed. There's technical people that begin to work on getting microphones and cameras inside or finding a way to see things. And then all that information is then fed to the tactical people who prepare for an, for an assault and they talk to the negotiators all along the way and the negotiators let them know how they might be able to support a tactical action if they have to take it. So really three separate teams all attack the site at the same time in their own way so that they can all get to an outcome that was just like this one tonight. Pastor Sen, I'm wondering if you knew uh, this man Dykes and, and or, or if you other people in the community have told you their impressions of him. I never had a chance to meet him, but I know several folks in the neighborhood that had had some uh, confrontations with him previously in the past uh, said that he was a man that was, um, that kind of patrolled his area, walked up and down his property line at night, some even said carrying in, uh, uh, guns and just, you know, he was real, real watchful over his property, didn't want anybody to get on his property and, uh, you know, I've heard several different stories of people that had some conflict with him in the past, but I never had the opportunity to meet him before. And Chris, this man Dykes uh, had a court case that, that he was facing based on an altercation he'd had with a neighbor uh, in the recent past. Again, that's also got to complicate any kind of negotiations because if that is, I, I, I mean, we don't know for a fact, but, but I would assume that pending court case maybe had something to do with his taking a hostage or his uh, feeling under pressure to some regard. So when you're negotiating, how do you try to deal with the reality of what this guy is facing. How do you talk to him and try to kind of allay his concerns? Well, Anderson, you're right. That probably was the triggering event uh, with all the stress and strain that he built up in his own mind in advance. Uh, that actually gives the negotiators something to talk about. Um, anything and everything becomes a topic for negotiators to begin to talk to a subject like this about, to find out what makes him tick, to get his perspective on it. You know, the comment was made earlier today by the sheriff that they were trying to give him essentially a forum to express his views and a safe environment to do it in. That was the approach that they were taking, and while they're doing it, they gather as much information about him as they can. Uh, and Senator Smith, yeah, I know Ethan is just two days away from his sixth birthday. I can't imagine a better birthday present for him and, and for his family, certainly, than to, to have him safe uh, and, and reunited tonight. W what's your message to, to the community? I mean, how does the community go about recovering from something like this, healing from something like this? Listen, this is a very um, strong faith-based community. They've pulled together during this and um, have just, there's been an outpouring of love. And I know Ethan's mom was very appreciative of all the prayers, uh, very appreciative of um, the support from all the volunteers. And um, they were just praying for a very peaceful outcome to this situation. And I know that um, tonight that, that the family's just so glad to have um, Ethan back home with them. And we want to thank everyone who had anything to do with that. A law enforcement did a wonderful job here. Oh, it's been an incredibly tense number of days for, for law enforcement and family members and the whole community. Senator Smith, I appreciate you being with us. Pastor Sen and Chris Voss sure, as well. You.